Now we're going to start to make some end papers. Uh, I have in this plastic bowl about a uh, half inch of water. And here is some wheat paste. This is genuine wheat paste. Uh, and I'm going to put about two tablespoons in here. Like that. Maybe not quite two. I can always add more. And I'm going to just stir this with a brush until I get it all mixed. It will probably take a little more. And you see that it becomes sort of a glossy, you know, medium. This looks like it's, it's expanding very well right now. So I'm not going to add any more just yet. The, the whole idea of having the paste uh, is you want it so that when it uh, is in here and it's in an irregular, not flat, you know, kind of form, that there's, you don't see any water forming. So I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes while we cut the end papers themselves. And this paste, uh, once it's made like this, if there's any left over, I can put a lid on it and put it in the refrigerator and I'll have it for about a week or two. That looks pretty good. It's almost like a, a gelatin now. See how it, it shakes a bit. Now I'm going to cut the end papers. We're here at the board shear and I have my square. I'm going to take one of the uh, sheets that will become the end paper and put this in uh, up against the knife so that the knife is where it cuts is just about halfway, you know, through. That way I can measure this by sliding the angle up to it. Then I'll lift this out and I'm going to tape it down to keep it from moving in case I knock it. And take my end paper, which is, this is a, uh, a pinstripe paste paper that I painted a number of years ago. Put it through here. And give it a cut. Now I'm cutting this one a little bit long because it has a rough edge. It has a deckle edge on it. So I'm going to just cut this like that first. And then I'm going to turn it around so that I have two cut edges. And this will match our, be our end paper. I need four of these. Because I have two albums. And this one here is not long enough, not wide enough, not tall enough, I think, for the, uh, the papers. It's, it's short, by about it, two inches. So that becomes scrap for a smaller book. And then there is this one, the second sheet. do the same here. I'm going to bring it over the blade just a little bit. And then turn around and cut the rough edge of the paper off. Okay, so now I have all four of these. And I'm just going to fold these, let's see, put this here. Like that. I'm going to fold it right on here now and make sure that all the edges match.
we could do this at the table, but since I'm here and I'm just going to fold them here, knock them up against the square, fold this over. And that way I can just trim all of these at the same time. Make sure these edges are lined up here. Just simply trim the edges off. And I'll have the end papers the right size. The books are going to be trimmed on the fore edge, so I don't have to have these absolutely perfect at this point. go. Now we're ready to paste these together. Okay, we're set up here now to put our uh, end papers together. These are going to be what we call made end papers, which means the uh, decorative paper will be attached to a piece of the text. And that makes a, a laminated sheet that goes uh, against the book. So, the uh, first thing I've noticed is that the uh, paste has gotten quite thick as it has uh, matured here while we were cutting the, uh, the end papers. So I'm just going to add just a little bit of water here to thin it down. Because I would like it to spread fairly easily. Maybe even a little more water. Yeah, this looks better now. Okay, now what you want to do, uh, and this is just good practice, is you have spines on, or you have your folds, and you want to turn these opposite each other. That way you can keep your heads on one side and your tails on the other. Uh, it's not so important with these end papers because they're simple stripes. But if you have an end paper that has a direction to it, you want to do that so that you have a front and a back. Uh, and it might be a good idea also to, uh, if, your ed if your end papers have a top and a bottom, to simply, you know, mark the top with a little pencil so that you know that that's the top when you go to put these things down. So, I've got a little bit of uh, paper here to paste out on. Probably need a little bit more. Let me get one of these. Pull this off the gluing pad and then I can open it up and make it bigger, like that. Okay, I have put the pressing boards over here on the side as well. So, start in the center and just paste out. Paste is still a little bit thick, but it will be alright. And the reason we paste out the text sheet is because the text sheet will expand. And as it expands, uh, your end paper will go down onto it dry. That's the spine at the top here. So I'm putting that around. And then I'll do the next one. Uh, the reason we do that is because the uh, paper will expand. And when it contracts again, you want it to contract toward the book. That's why we do the uh, the text paper instead of the end paper. And then you'll do the same thing with the end paper 
when you case it into the book so that if it expands and then contracts, it'll contract the cover toward the book rather than away from the text. Okay. Put that in the waste sheet, fold it over. And now I'll pick up the end paper and match the ends. Turn that over. Do the same thing here. The Stonehenge is not expanding that much. Okay, and then put your text sheets together. Put them on your pressing board. And then it'll go into the nipping press. This is the gluing pad that you see, uh, see me make in the gluing video, video. And this is a real benefit to having it like this because occasionally you will get things that you need to have larger papers for. So you can just tear off two sheets, open them up like a, a folio, and you have it ready to, to work. So. Make sure you get all the edges on this. Okay, that's the first one. Put the spine down here. And you notice I'm brushing from the center off the edges. Don't ever go brushing like that because if you do that, you'll put paste inside the uh, inside the paper, inside the fold. And that folds up neatly and goes away. And now we grab the end papers, match up the spines here, and pick them up, text together, and I'll Can't go to the press. <laughs> so I'll take the end papers out of this one, put the new ones in, and put them in the nipping press. So here at the, are the <coughs> so here's the made end paper, and you see that the text is here, and then there's the laminated page here with the end paper on it, all one piece. So I'm going to let these dry, and then we will attach them to the books.
They dry with the board and some weights on them. Here are the books, and I'll set them here on the side. End papers are under here. And I'll take it like a waste sheet of paper so that we can attach the uh, end papers. So I'm going to turn these over so that I have two black sides up like this. And I'm setting it back just about a quarter of an inch for uh, to expose the edges of the uh, end papers at the spine. Tearing off a straight edge of the waste sheet here, and I'm going to mask off this other, the top sheet. Now I'm taking PVA. down here. And then on the first book, attach the end paper, turn it over, and attach the other side. folder, rub this down a little bit, bring the tapes around, and make sure everything is nice and tight on here. So another waste sheet. I'll separate the end papers, expose the little edge here, tear off a straight edge here, line these up and put on some PVA. Pull the tapes back, line this up to the spine. Rub it down. And do the same thing for the back of the book. Okay, now uh, I'm going to put a little tip of glue between the kettle stitch and the tape on each side here, and this will keep the book from moving to uh, moving this way once we put it into the guillotine to get it cut, because I'm going to have the four edges trimmed. The four edges are really ragged, and they all have deckle edges on it. And even though people like deckle edges, they should never be on the fore edge because they really catch dirt and they just start to fold over as you turn and use the book. So I'm going to prepare this now, take a little bit of PVA. I'm going to lower the camera just a second so you can see. Now 
There. Bring this off the edge of the table here. And just put a line of glue like this. It doesn't have to be as thick as what I'm doing here. We just want to hold it so that it doesn't move in the guillotine. spine up here so it's all nice and flat. The other one was pretty flat. I didn't have to worry with that. And just put some glue in there like that. I'm also going to stick these ends of thread down into the glue as well so that they don't stick up. And we'll do this one too, right here. And I'm just looking through to make sure that there's a little bit of glue holding each signature together through that. Okay, we're all done until we, you know, cut the cut the edges. <laughs> 